Hey guys, it's Jane. It's Friday and I'm here for a Friday read. So I'm going to try and make this quick, which I know I say every week. <laughs> but, you know, one can always hope. Um, the really, really exciting read that I did this week was The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison, but I'm going to talk about that at the end. Um, I've been trying to get my thoughts about that in line and I'm going to do that at the end. Um, the second most exciting book that I read this week was a non-fiction book, John Safran's Depends What You Mean by Extremist, and I've decided I'm going to do a standalone review of that after I've thought through it a bit more. So that leaves one more book that I finished this week that I've got to tell you about, and that is Lucy Sussex's Blockbuster which is um, halfway between a popular and an academic um, sort of history of the publication of a particular book, The Mystery of a Handsome Cab, which is um, a book that was written in Melbourne and published in 1886, I think is the year, in the 1880s. At this very, very special particular time in Melbourne when it was um, the fastest growing city in the world and one of the richest cities in the world because of the gold and whatever. Mystery of a Handsome Cab um, became an international bestseller was the best-selling detective story of the 19th century. It outsold all of the Sherlock Holmes books. It's never been out of print, and it's a really fascinating story. So um, Blockbuster talks about um, the author, Fergus Hume, and his background. It talks about how this book came to be written and um, published, which is a really interesting story. It was a debut novel, and getting published as a debut novelist in the colonies at that point was no mean feat. <laughs> in many ways, some things haven't changed. Um, it, it, so it's not just about Fergus Hume because he uh, would never have got this book published if it wasn't for the interest of um, a number of other people involved in Melbourne at the time. Um, he was he was knocked back by every major publisher, but there was one or two people who read the manuscript and decided it was a goer. Um, and uh, there was one bookseller who basically um, went into business as a publisher in order to publish this book. And there was a woman who um, had made a lot of money in mining who was looking to invest, and she, as a speculative investor, backed the um, enterprise. It's a, at a time when detective fiction was really just finding its feet. There were earlier examples, but the genre conventions hadn't really been bedded down, so things were still fluid. Um, it's just a really interesting moment in time. And the book isn't like the writing in the book isn't the world's greatest. As I said, it sort of it seems to not know quite what it is. It's halfway between popular and academic, with lots and lots of footnotes and stuff. But for a Melbourne person who loves books like me, it, um, there were just nuggets in it which were amazing. I really enjoyed this um, read, just as a kind of little capsule of history. And it, what it, the other thing that it did is it um, really encouraged me to go and pick up handsome cab um, which I've been meaning to read for a million years and I'm actually in the middle of reading right now I'm about halfway through and I have to say uh, as a 19th century murder mystery <laughs> it really holds up but as I said at the beginning of the video the really really major thing that I read this week is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin in some ways there's not much I can say about this book because it's the third book in a series and you say too much and you spoil previous volumes. Um, but in general outline, this is a story set in a secondary world that is not that different to Earth in some sort of putative future. There are people in this world who have an extra sense that they can sort of sense geological activity. And that's important because this planet that they live on is highly geologically active. And our genes, who are people with this power, can sense that stuff is going on. And those who have been trained can affect 
what's going on geologically um, to a greater or lesser extent, depending on how you know naturally talented and also how highly trained they are. The origins, these people um, are treated terribly, terribly by the general population. They are loathed and feared. Um, often they are killed if you know if they're found out. The only way you can safely survive as an origin in this uh, in this world is if you basically surrender yourself and act as a tame monkey for the state. There is a second um, group of beings, uh, strange beings in this world, who are known uh, in the story as stone eaters. Uh, the first one of those appears in the first book, but you don't really know what's going on with uh, Hoa, this stone eater. Um, and the stone eaters are a bit more involved in the second book, but in the third book, A Stone Sky, we actually really get to know, to meet the stone eaters and find out what is with them. So that's one of the really important things that happens in the third book. The other really important thing that happens in the third book is that the uh, initiating crisis in the, the beginning of the first book is that Essan, one of our point of view characters, um, an origin woman, um, discovers she comes home one day and discovers that her young son is dead uh, her husband is the one who killed him and he the husband has uh, um, taken off and taken with him her um, uh, I think 12 year old daughter and um, her son sets off to track down um, her daughter Nason. It's not the only thing that's going on in the story, but one of the really big overriding, you know, movements in the story from the opening of the first book is that Essan is searching for Nason, her daughter. In the third book, uh, a number of years, not a huge number, but a couple of years have passed in the course of the three books. So um, Nasan is now 15, I think, in the in the third book. Um, one of the really key things that happens in this book is that Essan and Nasan finally catch up with each other. This reunion, um, which happens towards the end of the third book, is one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever read. It really is amazing. Now, I'm not going to say anything more about the plot. Um, I just want to spend a little bit on the themes. The, the big themes that I found coming out of these books were um, one is about sort of racial relations and the injustice of treating um, people as means rather than ends, of using people, dehumanising a group because they are different and um, not allowing them self-determination. The parallels in this between um, the way that the origins are treated to um, black slavery are drawn in a number of different places. So um, uh, there's a slur um, version of origin, roggers, and the way it's sort of said and the way it sounds, it's making an analogy with the n-word um, and I don't think that's at all um, an accident so there's this really strong um, theme about race but not just about difference about oppression that's one of the really big themes uh, there's another enormous theme about the way that we use the earth the earth is actually a, a quite a major character throughout the series but especially in this third book they call him in this in this world in the story they call him father earth which i always thought was kind of cute as distinct from mother earth the third big theme is about motherhood family but especially about motherhood um essence trials throughout the story um and 
especially at the end, because of her motherhood, because of what is expected, demanded and required of her as a mother and also because of what she just almost against her better judgment, what she requires of herself as a mother. It's just, it's um, really unsentimental but incredibly powerful. Um, so I'm going to finish there because it's become a long video when I said it was going to be a short one. If you have not read the N.K. Jemison books, I can strongly recommend them. Um, I know that they are being marketed as fantasy, but actually they have a really strong SF vibe, if you ask me. They're on a line between epic fantasy and um, science fiction, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a good line. So you want to get in there. I am going away camping this weekend. It's not my favourite activity. The boys are really excited. And... Um, I'm just hoping it's not going to rain, <laughs> um, which means I'm really not going to be around for comments for the next couple of days. But if you do leave something, I'm sure to see it on Monday. I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.